Hello, welcome, welcome all to another installment of Old Men Yell at Cloud. I am your host, Jim Schultz, and always with me is Cranky Christopher. Hey! And Pukey Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Today we're going to be doing 2016 The Party by Andy Schaaf, and today uh, I have a special guest in, flew him in from all the way down the street in Attleboro, Massachusetts. County Street. Um, You may have heard him from uh, the bands The Sweet Release and Aquaria, uh, Mr. Jimmy James Luciano. how you doing? Um, I have a feeling that uh, Jim is just trying to intoxicate me to the point of um, taking advantage of me, and it's... He's not it's, wrong, it's ladies pleasant. and it's gentlemen. Pleasant, I think. I mean, he's already gotten you onto this podcast, so it, it's begun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trapped in some room in a basement. Uh, I feel like I've been here before. You've been here, yeah, several times. Yeah, I mean, I've been wait, mind race. Then to, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just mind wipe. It's all a black thing. Scheme. Yeah, you just. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, um, we played a show last night. We did. We sure did. We did. Yeah. So, Patrick, that was a- do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so uh, I had like a, a first time moment, a uh, sort of a gold star moment for me. Uh, we were about <clears throat> 30 seconds into the first song, and I got up from the keyboard and went right into the bathroom and puked. And like a champ, he came right back out and. Well, uh, not right back out. He vomited for a bit. Well, I, I mean, I vomited for about five minutes. Let's, yeah, let's, 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 well, not, right, right. let's not underscore we how did... much he vomited, because yeah. I think that makes the return all the more impressive. You, myself, and Sasser had to do a little bit of jamming while... Uh... Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, you look had, great, though. We had to, <laughs> you look great. We I mean, to... I've never seen you before, so, I mean, you could just look like shit all the time. I don't know, but I you do. look great, man. You I, do. Well, this is about as good as shit gets, I guess. Well, cheers from across I took the a shower. Table. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm like shower. Jim. <laughs> no, I smell awful. I did yard work all day today. And... Yeah, Jim smells like a clown's asshole. Like, what? <laughs> why? <laughs> why specifically a clown's? It's funny. Why not? Does not ha ha funny? Does a clown's asshole have makeup on it? I mean, like if you weren't wearing clown? spotted clothing and having a red nose, I think it would be uh, a little bit different. I, I I don't know if their assholes have makeup on them, Jim. I don't ask these things. Oh, that's, they definitely That's not do. polite. Well, you you know what that smells like? Apparently, I don't know. Yeah, it smells like you right now. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so yeah, I, I stumbled across this album kind of by accident. Uh, I was on uh, I was on iTunes and I, I was following a, a friend of mine who lives down in Texas, and this popped up on as something he was <laughs> following on iTunes or just following on iTunes. Okay, cool. Fuck you. I thought you meant you were just in your truck like half a block away waiting for them to leave their home. (laughs) Just waiting for him. What's he buying today? He goes into the record store. Oh, what's he got? What's he got? Get the binoculars out. Um, And uh, the same shampoo as him as well. What did did that man just buy? (laughs) Uh, Excuse me? What? (laughs) What did he buy? (laughs) So anyways, yeah. um, I was following him on iTunes. He had been listening to this. So I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And uh, I fell in love with this record. Um... And uh, so a little bit about Andy Schaaf. There isn't that much about the album itself, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about Andy. Um, Andy Schaaf is a Canadian singer-songwriter from Regina, Saskatchewan. He plays several instruments, including the clarinet. clarinet. Ooh. Uh, did I hear clarinet on the album? You did. You did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he was born in Estevan, Saskatchewan, grew up in Benefay and later moved to Regina. His parents ran an electronics and music store, giving him access to a variety of instruments. He played Ooh. Christian music with his parents. Uh, he played drums in a Christian pop-punk band called Aww. Captain until 2006. Oh, Jesus, Jesus is, is the captain. captain. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we're on the same yeah. page. Yeah. Yeah. Captain yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yep. What, if, any, what if Jesus captain was Christ. the first mate because they were in like some different church? So oh. like Jesus is important. Don't get me wrong. He's first mate. But the uh, the real person is Job. Oh yeah, that's true. The yeah, older Job, brother. Yeah. Job is Job's the captain. Mm-hmm. Captain he's, Job. He's, uh, he's Jesus's older brother. I don't brother? know. No, because like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the the younger brother is the cool one, and sometimes you know, obviously the older one it gets you know every gets every a little extra attention. Every year I challenge myself to read something really fucking oppressive and difficult just to fucking do it. Uh, last year I read a collection of um, Icelandic sagas. I think this year I'm going to read the Bible. I think that would be a good one. I think it's kind of just a good thing to have in the yes. mental Rolodex in terms of like cultural references and right. shit like that. I tried, and I couldn't do it. It's pretty dry. Yeah. It's pretty, it's dry. pretty Dude, dry. Dude, if I can get through the sagas, I can get through anything. 
If you I can get that, through the um, Silmarillion, you can get through the Bible. I read that. Uh, I was in church when I was a kid, and there were, they had the the hymns, and mm-hmm. it's, it had "Come in me, Jesus." And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same, same reaction. Yeah, like like yeah. ejaculate. Yeah. Ex- yeah. <laughs> 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 continue, Anyways, Jim, continue. Uh, <laughs> he released his debut album "Darker Days" in 2009, and followed up with the EPs "Waiting for the Sun to Leave" and "Sam Jones Feeds His Demons." Uh, he released the album The Bear of Bad News Independently in 2012. The album was released in 2015 on Tender, Loving Empire, and Party Damage Records. Uh, and then he officially assigned to Arts and Crafts Productions in Canada and anti-internationally, anti-internationally releasing the non-single album Jenny Come Home as his first release on both labels. Just to avoid confusion, anti internationally is the label, correct? Yeah, that's what I yeah. okay. figured out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw like, that on the the vinyl actually. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the one that we just listened to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then through uh, 2016, he toured Europe, uh, opening up for the Lumineers. And then he moved from Saskatchewan to Toronto and uh, released the party, which we'll be talking about today. Uh, he pretty much did everything on this album. He did. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, according Besides, to the liner uh, notes, what, what's his name? Colin Shears was the guy that did the strings. He did a great job. Man. Yeah, he he yeah. Uh, he co-arranged the the strings. Yeah, the strings were fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. This, is a, this. this is a beautifully produced album. Yeah, and apparently he Andy did uh, he wrote, arranged, produced, uh, and recorded this record. He he didn't do the mixing or mastering, but he uh, I think he also engineered the record. Nice. Tonally, he was spot on. Yeah, yeah. With um, every instrument, I'd say. Oh, it's like uh, Jimmy, you were mentioning when we were listening, like. For somebody, he, obviously he's a multi multi instrumentalist. Yes, and uh, but <laughs> he definitely has an ear for tone for like every fucking instrument he yeah, touches. Yeah, well, we were talking originally. What was it? The first song with the the guitar fuzz so- uh, yeah. sound that was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was it, so it's, cool. He's an aestheticist, basically. Chris, uh, what did you say? Is it you said it sounded like it came from like a small like amplifier but also like doubled or something like that like, yeah the, like... the magician uh to me in particular that uh that fuzz guitar on it it sounded like he was playing a fuzz guitar through uh I, they're called smokies right those little like uh cigarette pack guitar amplifiers that oh, are I powered by like a I, nine I, volt i think oh, I just like those about. little marshall things you yeah. can get or whatever yeah, yeah even yeah. though the marshall ones sound like shit dude. yeah yeah, yeah. They, all, they all sound terrible because it's like a tiny little one inch speaker that has mm. no volume control you can actually uh fun fact you can run a stack through those Wow. Yeah, if you plug in your guitar into that and then plug the other end out into a stack, it'll it'll work. Mm. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have the best sound in the world, but yeah. it's it's a fun thing to try. My, my clip on Marshall amp, it it sounds like shit. So like, yeah. I, I could play like without it, and it'll probably be louder. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah so, uh, it, it sounds like one of those uh, smoky amps with a fuzz guitar. Uh, it was it was pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. So Jim, I, I was just thinking it's it's interesting that you picked this record because I've also heard of this record before. Uh, Actually, my wife, Gina, showed it to me. Uh, I guess she found it through Spotify. It came up on, like, one of the either, like, Grizzly Bear or Unknown Mortal Orchestra radio. After, like, you know, the the album ends, it, like, just starts playing random bands and shit like that. I love that shit. Yeah, and and you can discover a lot of great artists that way. Yeah, Uh, But fuck Spotify. Don't, Don't give them your money. Oh, I do. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. You, you got to torrent Spotify. I yeah, do. you have to. <laughs> you have to torrent. If you want, like, we can't. I, uh, yeah, we can't Spotify you, my LimeWire right now. Yeah. yeah, we can't tell you how to torrent Spotify uh, audio uh, in terms of audio. But if you want to know how to do it, uh, just text yes to six six four two, and we'll yeah. get right back to you. And just download 69, the new Lincoln. 69, 69. Download the new Lincoln Park album. Dot exe highest quality. <laughs> dun, yeah, no, dun, you can get all of that through uh, torrenting Spotify. Dun, 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 oh, for sure. Dun, dun. Um, yeah, I, I give all my money to Apple, so there's that. All right, uh, let's go around the fucking horn uh, and talk about our uh, favorite songs, starting with uh, Mr. Patrick Barry. Ooh, I'm doing it this time. I gotta yeah. throw up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, he'll be back in like five minutes. Yeah, we'll do some improvisation in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, no, I I did not have any of the leftover Indian food today. I I threw it right out because I decided it. Was if, probably the culprit. If you didn't, that would have been such a fucking great decision. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I want a moment alone with the butter chicken. <laughs> uh, my favorite song was Early to the Party. Uh, 
yeah, it, it's it, it's just a it, it's a really beautiful arrangement, uh, and yeah, just just coming off the the first track, the magician, it just uh, was tonally similar, but also just sort of introduces a. Uh, it, it made it just to introduce a new mood really nicely and yeah the uh, the chord progressions were just like really nice and everything kind of breathed into everything uh into one another it's very kind of steely dan meets crosby stills nash uh yeah and I, I just really uh yeah i really like that track yeah. the uh the lyrics uh really are, are like very poignant and uh yeah, they, he, he's definitely setting a mood there, kind of creating these character sketches yeah. and everything yeah, um, I was gonna, all over the album in general. But Right. I was going to kind of, I forgot to bring up that point. This album, it's kind of a concept album in a way. It's basically about a guy who goes to a party and kind of deals with all the awkward situations you would deal with as somebody with kind of social anxiety. Right, and, uh, you know, he's yeah. a multi-instrumentalist yeah. uh, guy who's a, a real studio rat, so, yeah, very surprised to hear he's socially awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and that second song there, they were able to uh, kind of portray the whole yeah. concept of the album where he's talking about, like, something about him pivoting his ankle and, like, yeah, I'll go with you even though I don't want to be there kind right. of thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the string shit on that song is just gorgeous. Just so shit, lush, just pure like, shit. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, that, on that song in particular, it's just, like, the, the way they swell in it's just uh yeah very very nice very very overwhelming but in a uh it's uh it so so like i said my, my wife actually showed me this album and it's one that we throw on like you know on sunday mornings or something like that and it kind of has it's that, definitely a sunday morning right after church oh yeah, yeah right yeah. after church yeah. uh right after we sacrifice our goat um, <laughs> <laughs> pray to bathomet um, uh and uh yeah, it, it, yeah, it just kind of has that like nice lift to it, where it's like, all right, let, like let's let's get the morning started, but like not too, you know, not yeah. not too high strung. Like we can kind of ease into it. But that like, song actually reminded me. Have you guys heard the uh, new Arctic Monkeys album, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino? No, not yet. Although I've heard good things about it, I, I just never got into them, so I didn't really give it a chance. Some of the tone, I wouldn't say all of it, but uh, some of the tone and the arrangements were very similar to that album. So Interesting. I recommend you check that out. It's yeah, really I'll good, give them a chance. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, not I, you, Chris. I said Patrick. Patrick oh, okay. check it out, Chris. No. All right. Well, yeah. fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. I always liked. Uh, I was talking to him, not you, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick, do not fuck yourself. No, I'm trying to go over Patrick's and sacrifice a goat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I won't listen to the album, and I won't fuck myself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christopher, what was your favorite track? My favorite track was Alexander All Alone. I knew that was going to be your favorite track. Yeah. Uh, it's the it, darkest one on the album. It, it has uh, ticked some of the boxes for me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the most sad boy track on it, so obviously yeah. I'm going to lean in that direction. But um, I, I think what I liked about it more was that it's one of the more expansive songs on the, uh, the album. Uh, I fucking love the piano pedaling the same note throughout, except yeah. during yeah. those little breaks where he'd uh, sneak another, uh, he'd sneak a little harmony like in a, there. Yeah, what was it, like a fucking half step or something? Like barely just getting that little harmony. Yeah, there was, was cool. the, it was like, yeah, it was super, super quiet, uh, but it added a lot. The tune yep. percussion. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I don't like things that aren't really produced. I really, really like my layers. I would rather listen to My Bloody Valentine than like a fucking folk singer or whatever. So, uh, yeah, this is the one that kind of ticked all the boxes for me. And uh, that cut measure shit that they were doing at the end of the chorus was mm -hmm. pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Good shit. Mm. 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 Mr. Mm. Jimmy James. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Favorite track. So I thought The Worst of You was the best. It was the best song to me because melodically it was a little bit happier, but it was also up and down, and it had some weird um, uh, changes in there that uh, 
the, just the arrangements really uh, struck me. And there, have you ever heard a song and then you are reminded of like another song, but yeah. you can't remember what it yeah. is? Yeah. But you're like, you know what? This will do. You know what I mean? So that's, <laughs> so that, that's kind of how I felt about it. So that, that was my favorite yeah, song. The, the, the private label brand, yeah. so yeah, to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that one had a uh, the vocal melody on it was really fun. I mm, thought he yeah. was. Uh, it was very like a very lot, playful. It was like up and down. Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a little roller. He does a lot of chromatic stuff with his mm-hmm. vocals. It's kind of like one of his hooks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I when I hear that song, I always just imagine like a fucking like drive-in restaurant like back in like the fifties, and that just playing out yeah. of a, a car or something. I like would that. agree with that. Yeah. All right, um, my favorite song is actually going to be Alexander All Alone as well. Uh, it's a fucking dark song, and I love it, because, I mean, the album, like, sonically is pretty, pretty happy and upbeat, even though the, the lyrics aren't really happy and upbeat, a lot of it's him being awkward at a fucking party, but, um, this one's, you know, it's dark, and the lyrics are very dark, it's basically about a kid who goes to buy a pack of cigarettes and fucking croaks on somebody's lawn, and, uh, (laughs) you know, it's like... Um, yeah, and the, uh... True story, same. The, the, what? I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> You've been there? Yeah, I You croaked, croaked on somebody's yeah, yeah, lawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Was it my frog? Lawn? No, it definitely wasn't your house. Okay. Yeah. But you just no. sat there You went to go buy a pack you? of cigarettes and you I passed guess. out on somebody's lawn? Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. actually, uh, when I went to go get the cigarettes, I came back, um... And, and I, you offered I, I the person... Party. No, no, and, um, and you I woke, passed out on yeah, the cigarette. Yeah, I... Croaked. I thought I died. That's oh. actually my uh, my brother's new saying. Is like when someone gets so fucked up the night before. He, he told me one day I walked in his house. He was like, yeah, so Blake passed away last night, and I was Jesus. like, oh my god. <laughs> and it was like actually like no no no. He was like fucked up. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah. But um no no. And I woke up, and then on the side of my dad's car that I was driving that night, there was just it was in the middle of the winter, and there was just frozen puke on the side. Of the <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, I have done that. So I can relate for sure. Can I talk about frogs real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you said croaked. <laughs> I mean, we're here. Yeah. Uh, no, so uh, Gina was looking at some like uh, some shit on eBay or something. This like that. This is your and wife. Yeah. This is my wife. Okay. Yes. And uh, and she and she found like a, an estate sale or something like that, which which basically is just like you know here here's a bunch of shit that that we're selling uh, or, or it's like a moving sale or something like that, uh, but. And there was a ton of shit in, in, in this uh, in this particular uh, on this particular listing, and I would say maybe ninety percent of it was frog or frog related. <laughs> okay, uh, so there's just like you know, and it was like interspersed with like normal things, like you know, oh here's some like antique mirrors, you know, here here's some uh, some silverware, and then oh here's like. Ten frog figurines. Uh, here's like the story a life size. Is, the story is the frog. riveting. It's very riveting. Uh, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> you know what I imagine? I imagine the guy that played uh, Uncle uh, Uncle, not Weasley. Uh, is this a Harry Potter reference? It is. Yeah, you know Harry Potter's uncle in it. Yeah, What's the, his name? What's the his piece name? of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, piece yeah. of shit. That yeah, actor. Uncle piece of shit. Yeah. Uncle <laughs> piece of shit. Yeah, I imagine uh, the actor who played Uncle piece of shit in real life. Uh, rest in peace, because that man has uh, shuffled this Dudley's, mortal coil. Uh, Dudley's dad. <laughs> Dudley's dad, yeah, yeah. But Uncle I imagine Genius someone who looks exactly like that actor, who has no people in his life, but he is just fucking enamored by frogs. And to the point <laughs> where like maybe he legally changed his last name to Toad, so he could be Mr. Toad. Sure. And like he just collects memorabilia, surrounds himself with it, and then eventually passes away. So this um, is his estate, clearly. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. He, he passed away, uh, and there was no one in his life, so they had to have an estate sale to like clear it out so the state can <laughs> yeah. claim his assets. Have you, are you familiar with Mr. Toad's wild ride, though? Yes, was, yes, 100%. Yeah, so it was, it was quite a ride, and, so, to the I, finish. All right, so here's the thing about... A lot of cocaine. Here's a weird thing about Mr. Toad's <laughs> wild ride. So Mr. Toad's... I just went to Disney for the first time uh, in February in my life. Was it oh, the most magical? That was the first time you went? Yeah, was yeah, it the yeah. most magical place on our it's kind of half-assed, but it was fun. Um, so, yeah, no, everyone's like, oh, it's going to change your life. And then uh, it took me a couple days to realize, like, oh, this is actually, like, shitty, and that's fine. Like, it's actually, like, a fun shitty. It's like, oh, yeah. Mickey Mouse is Jewish. Okay. All Nothing's right. going <laughs> to yeah. um, Nothing's gonna change your life anymore. Everything is uh, yeah, but but so but, but here's the thing that's really fucking weird. So, uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride has been replaced with this, like, Winnie the Pooh thing, which is problematic in its own right, because there's this one thi- like bit where there's, like, a Winnie the Pooh head sticking out of 
of like a jar or something on the wall, and his face is covered in honey, and it's just like someone somewhere like that does it for them, and that oh, troubles absolutely. me. Absolutely. But in the haunted mansion, there is uh, that person is me, by the way. Yes. <laughs> in the haunted mansion, there's a there's a tombstone for uh, Mr. Toad, and the year it gives is like the year that the they ride shut the closed. ride down. Yeah. So it's just like I can just imagine like fucking Winnie the Pooh being like. Oh, bother, we need to murder Mr. Toad for yeah. his land. Like, just, just like fucking having some, like, plot where he has to kill Mr. Toad. Oh, my God. And, that's and what... then he buried him at the haunted mansion. <laughs> I'm just going to log off to eBay now and say that I'm Mr. Toad and I have an estate sale. I will, I will liquidate his assets. <laughs> <laughs> going back to, no uh, uh, going back to the frogs, I've got a good frog story. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I love I love frogs. Yeah, frogs are great. Yeah, so let's let's keep it going. My dad, my dad's best friend growing up was like obsessed with frogs. He loved frogs. Like he had frog aquarium. He had stuff. frog there fever. Was this much fucking frog content. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, go. <laughs> frog but, tent. So I Wait, guess is this uh, your, who is this? Your dad's friend? My dad's friend. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, By the way, this, this, is, this a, is all the same person. His dad's friend talking. is a toad. Yeah. Yeah. Are we a frog cast now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> frog cast. <laughs> But uh, I guess my dad was at work one day, and there was, like, a pond, like, by the work. And I guess there was just frogs everywhere. So my dad was like, oh, I'm going to catch a bunch of these frogs and give them to my friend. So my dad caught all these frogs and, uh, like, went to give it to him. Went to give it to him. And uh, he wasn't (laughs) home. So he's like, all right, I'll just put them in this box and uh, leave them here. And he'll get them when he gets home. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Your dad is very sweet. It ended up up being, like, 98 degrees that day. (laughs) And uh, later that day, uh, I guess... uh, he called my dad and was like, oh, man, some sick bastard left a box of dead frogs on my doorstep. <laughs> hey, so I got Jesus you a bunch of dead Christ. frogs. <laughs> so you realize, okay, this is like the equivalent of somebody putting a box of dead cats on my lawn, right? <laughs> yeah. so, and, like, the trauma that would come with that. What's, what's interesting is that we're seeing his supervillain origin story. So that is the origin of uh, the man who would become Mr. Toad, yeah. <laughs> who would be murdered by Winnie the Pooh and then have an estate sale of frog exactly. memorabilia. All you right, know? Patrick, what's your least favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so my least favorite track was... Sorry, uh, My least favorite Sorry. track was The Worst in You. And it wasn't just because the worst was in the title and it made it easier. Well, uh, I, I I didn't hate the song. It, it's Jimmy's exactly looking that. at you like he's gonna kill you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's no. Least, actually, I thought this was the best again, and I was just like, oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, probably look psycho for sure. No, it, it, it's exactly that, and I I, I think this is a, a pretty good quality record. Uh, and I, I didn't hate the song. It just kind of had the most sort of la di da melody to it, and I like didn't quite. Have have the the poignance and uh, that some of the other tracks had. It, it, it is very silly uh, because and, and this is a very like indie kind of record. Sure, and that that is more of the poppy kind of shit, right? I mean, yeah, am I wrong? yeah. It kind of has this like this AM pop uh, like '60s Motown kind of vibe to it, but like uh, yeah, just just kind of leaned a little hard into that AM popness for for my taste. It definitely strayed away from the record, I think. Yeah, a little bit, but uh, all in all, it's, you know, like like I said, I, I like every track on this you record. You piece of shit. No, I'm joking. I'm a, I'm a real piece of shit for giving this record. A, no, a, actually, a I, 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 that's actually a very good uh, <laughs> note on that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, my least favorite was "Quite Like You." And again, it's least favorite. Uh, that and Twist Your Ankle, I thought, were getting pretty samey. And uh, I was starting to kind of tune out a little bit. And that's that's the only reason I really am going to call it that. Because, yeah, I enjoyed this album. Uh, I just enjoyed those a little less. I like the little piano frills in Quite Like You. Mm. It's like, never met anyone quite like you. Bling! <laughs> nope, nobody thinks that's funny. No, no, okay. no. You know, what I, you know what I did actually like about that? Uh, going to that piano point there, yeah. the frills. Um, I liked how... Uh, he used either piano for the main rhythm or used acoustic guitar for the main rhythm. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't really combine both. 
Uh, there was one. I know there was one. I just dropped my jewel. Oh my god! As a millennial, I'm having a fucking existential crisis. <laughs> but no, um, jewel but I, shards. But th- there was. A, do you, what was the one that combined the two? Because I thought for the most part they kind of he separated um, those. Yeah. Like it was either acoustic guitar or piano, which I liked. Uh, oh, it was the, the worst mi- in you. Uh, it's it drives it along. It's a unison guitar and okay. piano thing. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my favorite. T- I knew that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of of that sort of arrangement of, of like upright piano and, and acoustic guitar, uh, kind of taking the rhythm parts of it. It's, it's a nice uh, yeah. The old nice the way old of karma police. I'm sure he yeah exactly. I'm sure yeah, he yeah. either composed on either acoustic guitar or piano, and then he just chose. Okay, I'm not going to do acoustic guitar here because it's a piano song, right? Yeah. right. Or the other way around. And I like that. I thought it it was a good. Um, it's Beatles, radio heady. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and in general, was I British. not talking about Beatles the whole yeah, yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. felt like, like it, it's not like any of the rest sounded like the Beatles, but maybe the arrangements and the chord progressions did remind me of it for sure. Mm-hmm. But um, is it? Is it still? Is it your turn? Did oh you? no, I'm done. Oh, you're done? Yeah, you're up. He you're fin- up. He you're finished, song. He finished. You're up. Um, so my uh, least favorite song, actually, and you guys are gonna hate me, uh, Alexander, all alone. Alexander Lee West The hell is found Inside of me And nothing else Will set me free The hell is found Inside of me Ooh. Okay, and it's my least favorite because of that piano doing that eighth note the whole time. Bing, bing, bing. It, it, oh, it just, okay, cool. oh, and even ostinato. throughout the chorus, yeah. throughout the, it, I thought it was going to change in the chorus, and that was the... Because the, the verse was very... It was dark, and to do a dark song, you definitely have to kind of stay on this kind of like droney, like same kind of chord yeah. thing. And there, there wasn't much going on, and it was a meaningful song, and I did like that, mm-hmm. you know? But um, that piano going the whole time, that, that one note uh, kind of just on the on the eighth note there and it was just ding 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 and then it went and then there was a chord progression and it stayed on that note which can be tasteful and i think it was tasteful but just because it was so prominent in the mix maybe it just really like i just didn't want to listen to it anymore um but i do think the song does have merit um maybe that just has to do with the mix itself but it definitely threw me off for sure do you uh do you ever listen to the cure i don't i i wait is did they did they do that one song love cats yeah I love that song. Okay. That's the uh, only song I will say that I really jam by The Cure. It is not representative. Um, love Cats! Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, have, cats. they have a song called uh, From the Edge of the Deep Green Sea, and it's like a seven-minute plus like epic type song. Of ding, ding, ding. And there's a ding, ding throughout. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, is that up? That's on uh, Wish, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, I, oh, that's a great I cannot yeah, wait I love to song. listen to that song. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, kind of, I bet I can learn that one. <laughs> uh, in, a, in a similar way that... Uh, Whatever that like main hook in the worst in you uh, was like very prominent in the mix. Oh, he's da, fighting back. He's da, fighting back. Da, 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 oh yeah, no, no, no. Kind of what annoyed yeah, me yeah. Um, in that song. So uh, yeah, touche. That, that is a very like one finger piano playing it, it, thing. I mean, there's nothing it, it wrong wasn't with very, that. No. It was a one finger piano thing. That was literally <laughs> what it was. But the, it, there was that a couple times where they had that dissonant kind of harmony mm, yeah. going on, which was nice. But um, yeah, that that was the only thing that kind of drew me away. Um, and I do like pop, so like repetitiveness doesn't like ruin me if it is tasteful. But mm-hmm. um, that was so repetitive and so upfront in the mix that that kind of that, yeah. that killed it for me. So, how's by you, Schultz? Uh, my least favorite is going to be Eyes of Them All. my second least favorite yeah i mean i don't really i don't it's it's just that it's just the least favorite it's the one that's it's the basic bitch of the album it's the right? yeah, TV you could take it or leave it really. yeah, yeah. Really. It's, it sounds like a fucking mike post tv theme like yeah. it, it like it i made a joke that it sounds like it reminds me of the uh, theme from wkrp in cincinnati yeah a little bit how does that go uh, i can't do that from yeah no, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I actually don't know that reference 
Oh, okay. It was, uh, I don't know many references. Uh, my IQ is lower than my shoe size. So. so so WKRP in Cincinnati was a sitcom in the late 70s, early 80s uh, about a radio station. And it's best known for its Thanksgiving episode. Okay. So find it on YouTube and watch it. It's very funny. It results in a lot of turkey death. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know what I noticed in Take It or Leave It? Um, <laughs> it was the, hold on, let me check my notes here. Uh, in Take It or Leave It... Where is it? Oh, jeez. Got to love those androids. Oh, I just said take it or leave it. Eyes on the mall. Jesus Christ. Um, oh, d- have you ever heard the new Amsterdams? They have like two good songs. I know the name. I'm they trying have like to... two good songs. Have... All the other songs are just so, just like, it's not generic. It's just lame. Yeah, the regular Amsterdams were better than the new Amsterdams. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, oh, old what the old Amsterdam. Yeah, they're what, fucking great. What, I know I know the new Amsterdam. What song do they I do? I drank them um, from the hose. I'm trying to think of the main song. There's one song that, see, there's one song that I do like, and it's a very slow, like, a one, two, three, one, two, three, one of those kind of songs. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a kind of like an R&B kind of bluesy jam. It's not R&B per se. It is an indie kind of record. Um, but it has that one, two, three, two. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it has a that soul kind of thing. waltz, um, if you will. But it uh, it is kind of a minor chord kind of progression, and it is very good. But they do have a couple pop songs. I'm not into them. I just think they're very, like, they don't force anything, but they just don't have anything that just kind of strikes you. So that's really, yeah, that's kind of the comparison I'm trying got to make. It, is that it, yeah. it was very, like, not striking, that yeah. song, to me. Um, and yeah, I'm not trying one... to shit on it because it was a good song either way. You right. know what I mean? On this album, not New Amsterdam's Fuck Them. <laughs> Besides right. that one song I like. Those two song writing bastards. Patrick, MVP. <laughs> uh, my Moment. MVP uh, and... Uh, oh, what's MVP again? Uh, the, your favorite Oh, part. yeah, the, like favorite, favorite arrangement moments. or something like that? Yeah, favorite moment. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, we were all kind of talking about this during the record listen. Uh, that little fuzz guitar line in The Magician towards the end there... It, uh, it, and what I love about it is it, it's a super dirty, like obviously very distorted tone, but it's it, it's thrown in the mix in such a way that it almost, you know, it, it could be mistaken for an acoustic instrument, uh, so to speak, just because it like it fills this very specific frequency range, uh, and, and like the uh, the reverb that they throw on it kind of gives it this nice atmosphere. Uh, yeah, it's it, it just like very brilliantly thrown in there, and it's kind of like reminiscent of uh you know late 60s early 70s uh we're you know in the midst of discovering guitar tones and like we're just gonna like fucking throw as much distortion on something as possible and oh shit that actually sounds kind of cool yeah kind of like where deep purple used to fucking punch holes in their speakers to just get like maybe we can get some cool sounds and it ended up being distorted right yeah yeah. i mean that's how how so many of these you know these idiosyncrasies you know became standard practice in, in yeah. what we would do and uh yeah and it just kind of had that it, it it just sort of reminded me of that you know this record in general is very hypnagonic and very uh very reminiscent of that's of, a new word i've never heard <clears throat> before hypnagogic yeah hypnagogic sorry that's the word uh it's like uh relating to sleep sleepy sleepy time okay yeah, and, well, like in the case, in the context that I was using it, uh, hypnagogic pop is uh, like music that specifically recalls a like a specific time period. Uh, like vaporwave is like a huge example of that shit. Like, like referencing a certain, or even <laughs> yeah. like even new wave, right? I mean, you think of Elvis Costello, right? You think of. Uh, what are the other guys? Uh, Joe Jackson. You know, well, you think so of that's, uh, Talking Heads a little bit, right? You inter- interesting that you should bring them up because they were, in a way, uh, sort of bringing back the like '50s and '60s element of, of straight yeah, ahead yeah, yeah. Uh, pop. You know, kind of going against arena rock and and the like prog rock and and all that sort of shit. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So so I I just I I've always really loved that little that line there and and what it. It's function in that particular track. Uh, that's it. Agreed. That's all I got to say about that.
<laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the, the queasy strings um, doing that ascending thing in uh, early to the party. Dying you and not want you Yes, that uh, that string break was just yeah. fucking. Uh, it was uh, good. Oh, it's it, it's so lush. It's so fucking yeah. gorgeous. No, it's, yeah. it's it's wonderful. It makes and me it's, feel things. It was able to kick off the record very nicely. Yeah, yeah. I think. Agreed for sure. Um, for me, it was that last song there. Um, and I I love it, the whole uh time. Um, I didn't actually think about. I totally forgot that that was like a thing that we had to think about. Like the uh. <laughs> That pivotal moment that was kind of like, oh my god, like that's a cool, that's a very cool part of the album that I really uh, enjoy. And uh, it, now that we think of it, um, I actually wrote a note down. Um, the string part at the, on the last song. I didn't know strings were gonna happen. Remember, we were talking. Oh yeah, yeah. We were yeah, talking right. about how, like, oh, does the acoustic guitar have like a little bit of a gainy tone to it? Yeah. We were talking about yeah. that, and I was and just then like, all of a oh. sudden, the strings. Yeah, and then the strings coming because I thought it was because I was saying I was like, that's very nice because it kind of it really cuts through and makes you really pay attention because it could just be an acoustic guitar doing regular finger picking, right? But it had that really nice kind of like it, it had, had that electric to it, yeah. tone to the acoustic guitar yeah. a little bit, like just very like tastefully. Yeah, and and then all of a sudden the strings come in. And that last chord of the chord progression um, in the chorus, or wherever the strings come in, I believe it's the chorus. That last chord in the chord progression has this dissonance. It's got this. It was it's got this like uh, yeah. it, like yeah. it was in a minor scale, but like it was like they use like a major scale note in, in the strings there. Like one of the, I'm sure Colin Shears when he was, or I think that's his name, Colin Shears when he was doing the strings. I'm sure he did multi-tracking. I'm sure he didn't just do one take because that would be impossible, right? Right. So he added this this little this note. Terrible that, strand that was on just kind of so otherwise. dissonant, <laughs> so dissonant, and so and it was just like ooh, like that's the noise I made. Yeah. Like it, and that's yeah, that's the noise that I'm making when I come now. It's ooh. So <laughs> it, so I literally came exactly at the same time. Yeah, they're right. You know, there are a few. I'm sorry like, about your couch, by the way. If you need me to clean that, I have um, some. Uh, WD forty in my car. WD forty. I, I, I believe that is gets that, out the is, squeakiness. Is that, at is least? that an old like fucking secret remedy? That, oh, do, don't worry about for it, getting worry jizz about it. out of a couch. Yeah, I dated a girl. I, jizz I dated a girl, couch. and she was a mechanic. And uh, yeah, I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, this WD forty gets everything out of everything. Man, the one that got away. <laughs> you talking about my sperm buddies that got away? <laughs> <laughs> I could have had a beautiful kid with a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. He was the, oh my god! He was the, thou- the thousand, the thousand that got away. He was little, <laughs> um, so I think you broke I think, Patrick. Yeah, I think you broke him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd kill so hard on this. This is crazy. No, that was that was that was very. Can good. you come <laughs> to my fucking open mic stand up comedy nights? That'd be great. Yeah, just just absolutely. you, like, and I'll just like duplicate your laughter multiple times. And then, <laughs> Yeah. That's all you need. Just yeah. you. I okay. Step two. You, Netflix failed special. comedians. <laughs> uh, I'm putting out the. I'm. I'm putting out a message. Let me come to your show. Like pay me. Hire him. Hire him. Yeah. yeah. Give me a cut of whatever you earn at the door, and I will sit in the back and cackle like a fucking. <laughs> yeah. M- in multiple different ways, and and then you can just cut it together, and it'll be beautiful. I'll and Jim will do back. the mixing work. Yeah. You got to pay him too. Yep. Um, it, what was your um. <laughs> 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 what was your beautiful moment? My or, beautiful moment was What's uh, the deal with those ghostbusters with the ladies in it? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm killing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. All right. Um notable mention, uh this isn't going to be my MVP, but I did want to call it out that because we were talking about how there was the the fucking up until this point this album is completely dry and then all of a sudden there's this oh, the, giant the reverb reverb yeah, yeah, slam yeah. that what, comes in. What song was that? Begin uh, again. Begin again. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Talking about the fucking. It was like brilliant intense. light will dissolve us yeah. all. That was intense, man. Yeah, yeah. That was a le- sure. like a, a, a 
huge uh, contrast. Yeah, mm. no, that was fun. Oh, I liked for sure. That. But uh, my actual my actual MVP is going to be um, the verses into you. I've got some things you don't need to get off of my chest. I know that we've had a few, and it's for too late. But if I win, I really like the. Bow, now, now, bow, bow, now, now. Like the yeah, kind the, of the piano thing. line is, yeah, the, is very fucking good in that. Yeah, Can't I be, like that a lot. Yeah. yeah, that with the with the clarinet line is it's uh, yeah, yeah, very tasty. So that's my MVP. Um, when you, actually, Jim, when you're writing, do you look to things like that? Like when I'm obviously, writing obviously, what? when you're no, when you're writing <laughs> music, I you don't know, write music. <laughs> yeah, do you play drums, dude? No, I people write music and then they go, Jim, hit things in time for me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! It's more than that. All right. So when you're sad in your room at night, too. thinking about how like you could be writing music to, um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but I was gonna say in a band that is a thing is like you know you you think about like okay yeah. what's the what's the thing that's really gonna catch on this song? You right. Know what I mean? Well, For yeah, sure. and and honestly, I think uh, we're all musicians, and we can all be honest here. Yeah, I'll like, ask you, Chris. Of... I'll ask you, Chris, because you you actually write music, unlike this fucking piece. Of music. <laughs> <laughs> unlike this Philistine. Well, <laughs> well, I think we could all admit that, like, uh, like writing music is one of the big things that you do. Is you fucking copy shit. Yeah. Like you oh, don't. Yeah. You're not. Yeah, that's me. You're, man. you're not like copying something to a T, but it's like you're thinking like, okay, you're that influenced. piano part into you. I want to do something like that. Yeah. Right. And you're going to yeah. try to do something like that, and it's not going to fucking sound so like it. So it's going to be those MVP moments that stick out to you, and you're yeah, like, I exactly. want to do that. I, I want right? to do something like that. Yeah. And you're, you're obviously not going to be able to do it, but sometimes it actually works out to your benefit. That it's <laughs> I like, like how you that. said you're obviously not going to be able to do it. <laughs> well, it, it, Everyone it, be nihilistic. You're not going to do shit. Don't well, care about you're it. You're probably right? not. And the thing is, if you do, then you're fucking Oasis. And like, there's there's its own set sure, of problems sure. if you get it if you actually manage to get it right. Um, but yeah, if you don't get it right, then you actually, a lot of times will come up with happy accidents. Right. Yeah, uh, sure. That's, but that's, right. That's... Being inspired by those MVP moments. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, yeah, yeah. My, yeah, yeah. my, I think the scariest thing for me when I'm attempting to write music that I don't actually do <laughs> is I'm like, everything I'm right. I'm like, oh, this is going to sound like something else. Somebody's gonna be like, Hey, that's my song. And then they're going to sue me. And then I'm going to be on the streets in a box, <laughs> sh- just covered in my own shit. Who, uh, that's the risk you run who's, when you write a song. Covered, <laughs> a box covered in dead frogs. <laughs> who's going who's gonna to sue you? The owner of the song. Mike Portnoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're going to like find you? They're going to hear your song? Wait, you don't think my song is going to get famous, Christopher? <laughs> <laughs> well, worst Have some case, faith in your friend, dude. Worst case scenario, you just add, tack their name on and... Give them some royalties. Yeah, it's not a. I actually not uh, gonna live uh, in a box. quick quick tidbit. Uh, you don't drank myself a sweater. I released that solo yeah. song. Yeah. So um, yeah, quick plug there. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, oh, but there's it, a section of that. Don't worry. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> well, apparently there's. <laughs> well, two Well, you know now. what? I'm making another <laughs> section. So. Yeah. No, um, but I actually. This is my fucking show <laughs> now. <laughs> I said, get the fuck out of my house. Not that it's time for mid show plugs. <laughs> not that it sounds like it at all. But uh, when I wrote "Drank Myself a Sweater," I used. The structure to a Ray Charles song that is unlike any other structure. Nice. Uh, uh, now I can't even think about it, which is great. Oh, Hallelujah, I Love You So. You know yeah, that yeah. song? Yeah. I think Hallelujah, so. I Just Love You oh, So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I took that whole structure and I put my parts on it. Dude, yeah. it's the same song length that fucking freaked me out. I was like, oh, dude, I'm <laughs> fucked. I'm so fucked. But, well, I mean, if you have the same song structure and the same tempo, like, <laughs> you're going to arrive yeah, at a dude, similar place. Yeah, dude, it's fucked, man. But, but the thing is, that's, like, it's it's a, it's a an original work. Like, you're not... Oh, the chords are totally different. Yeah, you're, 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 the t- melodies are totally different. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a different song. Like, you're taking yeah. one element from it. That's... I definitely came to one point of the song where I was like, okay, that's exactly like that song, and then I had to fucking switch yeah. it up, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, yeah. to kind of tie it back to that uh, hypnagogic thing, it's like, yeah, pe- people are kind of naturally drawn to these things that remind them of other things. Mm. And, and, you know, it, it is tough as, as an artist, especially nowadays where we're saturated with media, to not, you know, be compelled to do shit like that and right. not yeah. want to, you know, pick ideas here and there and and also see where you can take two unrelated ideas and combine them and try to create something new out of that. Mm. I mm. think I've mentioned it on this podcast before, but I have this nefarious plan to create the most cynical song of all time. And what I'd like to do is just take different elements that are proven to work within a pop context yeah. um, and just subtly put them in there. So like the millennial whoop, for example, that they talk about, you know, the oh, yeah. ah, 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 
<laughs> that's in the background of every song. Like, oh, or yeah. it's yeah, in the add weed a little vocals. banjo and a clap, and you're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, but take that melody line and just maybe play it on a guitar, kind of quietly in the background, and then like take the vocal melody from some random song and take half of it. And, yeah, like, that's cool. It's makes that collaging in a way. Yeah, yeah. Just so. collage all of this like fucking nonsense together mm. that people like in pop songs. Just put it out there in the world and see what happens. Yeah. See what the I think, problem is. Like, I think that's what uh, Foster the People is kind of doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure, for sure. I saw them at Alchemy at a, uh, it was like a post yeah. show after Lupo's or whatever, and there was like 50 people in that room. They sucked, dude. But, uh, <laughs> I, I was, thought it was a life insurance commercial or oh, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was reading about uh, well. Mark, Mark Foster because he basically, I think he was writing jingles, like commercial jingles, and he basically took that concept and used it for his that's music. A, that's great. That's a great that's idea. So do, yeah. it's, it's actually kind of impressive that he was able to do it because it's a completely different mindset getting that across in like 10 seconds yeah. versus three minutes. Yeah, right. I'm thinking so, about I mean, stealing that's... Ernie Bach Jr.'s fucking song. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah. I'm Ernie we Bach Jr. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah, fucking, I, dude, if I ever leave New England, that's the one thing I'll miss, even though I fucking hate it now, is the car commercials. Dead <laughs> Tar Box Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I want to murder that guy, dude. Oh, Ernie Bach Jr.? Yeah, him and Keanu Reeves. That's the two people I want to murder. Oh, Keanu Reeves is fine. I kind of, yeah. Ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I kind of want to leave some mystery here. Right. We've explored a lot. I like letting that hang. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. All right, let's, all right. Yeah, what do we got? What's, <laughs> next, what's next? Patrick, Move on. comparable Moving album. Next segment. Are we, are we doing comparable albums yeah. now? Yeah. All right, uh, so I'm, I'm actually going to pick another record from 2016, oddly enough. Uh, Wise Blood's Front Row Seat to Earth. Uh, so this is an artist, uh, female singer-songwriter, who uh, kind of does uh, similar chamber pop type stuff, and the, and the production is very, uh, very 70s, uh, influenced yeah a lot of like super dry product uh production on the drums and shit and and use of, of string swells and shit like that uh and, like a lot of mellotron and organ uh and yeah it, it's a record with a lot of like uh really nice arrangements really like very lush orchestral chamber pop shit and uh yeah, and it's in, in, interesting that it came out in the same year and kind of has uh, a lot of similar tones to it, a lot of similar timbres. It's almost like you could picture both records were like mastered along a side another. Uh, so yeah, that's my pick. Very nice. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with one 10 years prior, 2006's uh, Friendly Fire by Sean Lennon. Um, Ooh. Which, Ooh. Uh, if you haven't heard it, it's a it's a pretty good record. Um, basically, straightforward like pop in the classic sense. It's not like like I don't know. It's it, it real instrumentation. So like uh, live instrumentation, I should say. So like drums, guitar, bass, uh, piano, everything like that. Uh, it's a pretty fucking killer album. Actually, it doesn't get a lot of do, and it's uh it's fucking uh, it's it's kind of horrible. But basically, Sean Lennon hadn't made an album in a, like really long time leading up to it, and uh, his girlfriend cheated on him with his childhood best friend Oof. and he was kind of like working through that and kind of getting to the point where like okay i can forgive them at this point and uh his his friend died in an accident was it a uh, concept album in yeah that so way? He yeah. basically he started like he kind of did this album to kind of like parse with all the feelings of like the betrayal and everything but then like dealing with the death of his friend like as he was ready to kind of move on and forgive mm. him for it so it's a it's a pretty intense record but um sonically it reminds me a lot of this yeah. what's the name of it Friendly Fire. Okay. Yeah, hmm. it's uh, Vladimir Lenin's uh, grandson. Yes. Oh, so it's not it's not John Lennon's son. It is. It is. Yeah, we're just fucking around. We're just having a goop. It's, oh. ac- it's actually good uh, because I'm a big fan of Vladimir. Actually, it's it's it's, uh, it's Thomas Lennon's son, uh, the guy from Reno 911. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, in the state. Yeah, he he uh, he made the album when he was three. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> That's sad to have a friend die when you're three years old and yeah. have someone cheat on you. <laughs> yeah. it's that LA lifestyle, man, you know, they yeah, grow up it, so it fast. Wears down on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Live fast, die young, right? Yeah, baby. Yeah. So, uh, um, Jimmy James, what's your uh, comparable album? Well, real quick, talking about uh, Lennon, uh, have you guys heard The Delirium yet? I haven't heard it. I've heard some of it. Is it good? It's forced, isn't it? It's. I would say so. Mm. I, I don't check into that shit anymore. Yes, yeah, it is interesting though. I mean, that's a cool concept. It just. It sounds. It sounds like half-ass Primus with some John d- Lennon singing over yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, darling. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, mine um, was uh, "Night Timing" by Coconut Records, and that's a little odd because. It's more on the happy side. They do have some sad songs in there. And this record does have 
Um, although, like you said, that there's like kind of like some happy feelings in this album. Um, it still kind of has like a downbeat kind of like yeah. you know the content slower is a kind little, of yeah, yeah yeah exactly. Um, it's got this vibe to it that you know like okay this guy is not comfortable with this party or whatever's going on. Right. Um, but night timing um, arrangement wise was definitely similar. Um, I, have you guys heard the record at all? No. no. Oh, it's very good. Um, oh. Coconut it's, Records? Coconut Records, uh, Night And that's not the label. And I, No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it's interesting that way. Um, I, <laughs> apparently, the guy was like an actor or some shit. I don't know if I know. But anyway, um, but I, I'd say West Coast is a song on that album that definitely reminded me of this song. A lot of the arrangements are very similar. They have the piano. They have the acoustic guitar. Um, uh, whether it be either of those are kind of leading the rhythm there. And uh, like I said, the arrangements are very similar. And... Um, yeah, that that album's very uh, great to me. But I kept thinking about it throughout. I was like, nah, I gotta come up with a better uh, comparable album, and I couldn't. I was like, that's that's. It just kept yeah. popping up in my head. So that's that's the one that I have. For it's that, it's, so. it's not a challenge. Yeah. Just no, no, whatever, no, 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 no. whatever works. I was. I definitely <laughs> felt. The, I definitely felt the sweat come from my brow. <laughs> <laughs> I tasted the salt in my mouth as it dripped in there, and. Um, well, there's like I was like, that tastes of, good. Uh, so um, <laughs> it it, it uh, it's a combination of a lot of references. You you can tell on the record he, he's pulling a lot of different influences. Um, yeah, you can't quite put your finger on it. Something sounds familiar about it, but you just for sure can't quite figure out what it is. Yeah. So yeah. if you want the if you want like this kind of album, but if you want a little bit happier and a little bit, it's it's more of like a you want a groove, you want to shake to it, as opposed to kind of just like sit there and really just like this album, you really want to just like sit and just be like, yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Like I, I said, really it's, it's this is a Sunday morning record, maybe yeah, that a good more of a car Saturday drive night. record, right? Yeah, 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 yeah for exactly, sure. So. My comparable album, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with um, 2012 Shields by Grizzly Bear. Um, Ooh, wow. I was I was kind of spinning these. I mean, I've actually been spinning that album uh, Shields a lot lately, along with this. But uh, very cool. When I first started listening to this Andy Schaff album, I was uh, spinning uh, Grizzly Bear as well. So yeah, interesting. Um, so not was... necessarily sonically the same, maybe a little bit. Kind, uh, you know, in the indie sense, but yeah. Well, they they both uh, yeah they both pull a lot of inf- influence from seventies rock, and actually we were listening to. Uh, Oh shit! Now I'm drawing a blank on the name of their Grizzly Bears 2017 album. Uh, 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 whatever that record was, uh, yeah, we we were both listening to a lot of that, and uh, this album had come up on the uh, yeah. on the Spotify Spotify. <laughs> yeah, that's the torrent version of Spotify. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Spotify, you know, instant play, whatever that bullshit is. Yeah, randomized play. Which I'll probably pick Shields as one of my picks coming up pretty soon. I like. Yeah, actually, I I have the uh, that one, uh, painted ruins. That's the name of it. I, I have that on vinyl. Uh, yeah, it's very good. I might pick that too. All right, all right. Let's rate this bitch. Yeah, uh, Patrick. What is this? Out of five stars? What is this? No, this is one uh, to ten. One no, to ten. no decimal points. Only integers. Oh, out of ten? Yeah, one okay. to ten. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice. I'm I'm gonna round up and give it an eight. Uh, I think it's it, it's a really nicely produced record uh like like i mentioned it fits a specific mood uh and, and it and it does it, it it nails it out of the park knocks it out of the park uh just that sort of great lazy sunday morning feel to it but also has like a, a fair amount of lift and energy to it mm-hmm. uh there, there's a lot of passion and, and uh intensity to the strings and, and stuff like that uh and while while like the arrangements are pretty interesting there are moments where it gets uh, pretty samey, uh, where where he's, you know, he he has he has like some some tricks up his sleeve and and like maybe he overdoes it a few times, like you know a few hooks that that he does here and there kind of sound a little bit too similar. Uh, but I, and I'm not familiar with anything else this guy's done, and uh, I believe this is the most recent record he's done. So I'm I'm definitely curious to see where he goes next because uh, for for a record that's uh, relatively you know, kind of underground like this. Uh, you know, I, I I would say this is probably the most obscure record we've done on this show yet, uh, just because it's probably the only one that doesn't have a Wikipedia article, which is my basis for if something <laughs> exists or not. Create it. <laughs> exactly. It. Uh, so, you know, the the fact that this record is, you know, kind of for the most part under the radar, but it, it, it sounds fucking amazing and, you know, 
could fit, you know, alongside, you know, your your sort of, uh, you know, well-produced mid-70s folk rock records, uh, you know, like Neil Young or, or uh, CSNY or what have you. Uh, yeah, and I think in that way it, it deserves a, a high rating. And yeah, and I, and I just, I, yeah, I really, uh, there, there's, you know, there's no real low point on this record for me. It's it's pretty consistent throughout. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it an eight. I liked it. That's it? That's all you have Yeah, no, I, I, I liked this album. Uh, I enjoyed it. I'll give it another listen. I actually texted John Green as we were listening to it, saying, telling him to check it out, because uh, I feel like it'd be right up his alley. But no, it was, it was a solid album. I, I don't have a whole lot to say about it other than that. Yeah. Um, definitely going to listen to it again. We'll probably pick it up at some point. Um, yeah, eight. Um, for those playing at home, when uh, before we even started the record today... Uh, <laughs> Patrick and I were talking about how we both like this record, and and Christopher just exclaimed, "Ah, oh, Christ, am I gonna hate this thing?" <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it, it's weird that this record was was a was a uh, common find for both of us because yeah. you, you would think that it would be some some like really fucking lame seventies jazz fusion prog odyssey. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it was not that. Thankfully, not this time. Jimmy James. All right, so I would say that a lot of the songs, I would say like maybe, how many songs were on the album? Ten? Ten. 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 I would say uh, probably six out of ten of the songs would be, for me, eight out of ten. But I can't say the whole thing was eight out of ten for me. I, I would say seven out of ten, only because, um, like I said, I'm a pop guy. So this is coming from a pop guy. This isn't coming from like you know what I think everyone should think. Um, but um, I really, uh, there's not a hook in there um, that I remember. And no, for me, fair. for me, uh, that bumps it down to a seven out of ten. Um, other, like otherwise, th- I would listen to it multiple times, and obviously, I would learn the hooks, I would learn the melodies, and I would really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did really enjoy it. I thought it was great. You guys heard me. I was like, oh my god, this is fucking great. W- what's the name of this song? What's the name of this song? You know what I mean? I really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, but I definitely have to give it a seven out of ten, only because. Um, it wasn't as memorable as I wish it was. Maybe there, were, if there were a couple hooks in there that I'd remember, and then it would, because when you hear a good hook, it makes you remember a little bit before it or a little bit after yeah. it as yeah. well. You know, so um, that's the, my only criticism. Tonally, I would say nine out of ten, for sure. Yeah, the tone was um, amazing, brilliant. Arrangements also nine out of ten, but for sure, overall, I say seven, seven and a half out of ten, something like that. Yeah, no, that's so, fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I, I, I think the 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 arrangements and the writing were, were all like super solid, but yeah, there wasn't really a moment where the hooks like were, were particularly... like resonated and well, yeah. like the, you know, it, it was definitely you know could be debatable whether or not they were like truly transcendent or not. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give it a nine. Um, I I love this record, and yeah. uh, not only is it sonically just very like pleasing, um, <coughs> a lot of it kind of resonates with me as a socially awkward man who yeah. you know has been in situations like this at parties where I'm like, I don't really want to fucking talk to anybody, but here I am. Yeah, and, like uh, when I met you and I, and I was like, I don't know if he likes me or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that that's a meme. Still no. <laughs> that's like a meme format where it's just like this guy standing in a corner of the it's room Jim. and like it's all Jim. the thoughts <laughs> in his head like, you know... Like oh these these are these are fake metal heads right here. <laughs> <laughs> these guys these guys don't know real real prog. Fucking Steve Wilson is bay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have as many patches as me on my coat. Oh definitely not. Or my patch yeah. bay. Even even uh <laughs> even like shows just like playing shows and then coming down off stage and people come up to me and like wanted to have a conversation with me. I'm like, I just, I just want to pack my shit up and go home. Yeah, like, yeah. stop talking to me. <laughs> yeah. The weird thing is when people want to talk to me about the show. Yeah. It's like, no, it's just, we like, both experienced. Oh yeah. Like yeah, when yeah, you yeah. did the thing where you hit the thing. With <laughs> yeah, no, like, I'll, I'll, ne- I'll never so forget good. this. As long as I live, I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, he's an older guy. He's got glasses. He, he, he would hang around at shows. I forget what his fucking name was, but you don't have to say it here. But um, Adapter Adapter played at Simon's 667 one oh, time. Oh, 677. 67, all right, whatever 677, man, I missed that. R.I.P. It was um, fun, yeah. Um, Disgusting. We finished it, and this guy was, like, drunk, and he's like, dude, Radar Love. You guys, you guys <laughs> fucking sound like Radar Love. Golden Earring, Radar Love. 
And I was just like, okay. <laughs> and oh, he's one of those fucking golden earring heads. Jesus <laughs> well, Christ. So I would rather have... So funny they are rabid fan the bass, base. The bass is like the main part of the song. I would rather have that. I would rather have that though than the person like coming up and talking about the show because, like you were saying before, like yeah, we were both just there. Did, yeah, like, we were like, both there. Yeah. Like if you want to say like great set or something, I'll politely say thank you. But it's do you like, remember five minutes ago? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah, like when you bring up like different things that happened, it's like I I need to pack. Yeah. And I say <laughs> no, the, it's, I it's, say the baseline thing about radar love because uh, adapter adapter is a two piece with guitar and drums. Yes. Although so. that did that did happen to me actually at Simon's as well where we finished a set and this dude came up to me. And was like, oh, you guys are great. I love your sound. You're really unique. And I was just like, I thought the set sucked. I was frustrated. I just wanted to pack up. And I'm like, yeah, man, thanks. Like, go talk to Nick. And then ended up being fucking Matt Bashan from fucking Shadows Fall. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go talk to him. Oh, shit. We just missed a record, record deal. Oh, Jesus. All right. No, I don't think it was. Uh, yeah, but you know what I mean. Say, yeah. yeah. But. Now, what, what year was this? Let's was see. it the Attleboro Invades? I was gonna say show? like you know if this were no. 2006, yeah maybe Shadows Fall, but like this were 2014. Do you remember who else was on the bill? <laughs> I, so many shows back I then. Don't. Dude. Yeah. I don't. Um, yeah, I, it's all a blur to me. Yeah. We were playing like fucking one a week yeah. at that point. All I remember is just trying to get my shoe to come off the floor. It was just stuck. At it Simon's. Was just stuck. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I was just stuck in a sticky situation. And, uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, I get it. We've done the thing. Yeah. Um, Jimmy James, thank you so much for coming on the show. Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, I guess I would plug that uh, my band Aquaria, I'm playing bass for that band, um, just released an album. It's on all the Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff. Nice. I, don't, I don't know. It, it, when you do this, the thing to make sure it distributes everywhere, there's all these things that it distributes on, and I'm not going to list them because yeah. most of them are fucking shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like Spotify. Yeah, it title, goes on. It goes YouTube. on. It goes on Tune Song Melody. Like I don't know what that is. You know yeah, it goes I mean? on all those. Weird Who the hell's formats. using that? It goes on Dingling. I don't know what Dingling is. Well, I don't know. People, people got titled just so they could get Jay Z because, like, I think you can only get Jay Z on title or something. Yeah, like mine's that. not on title. It's irritating. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I would know, have to do that. Uh, I think singularly, I'd have to like just go on title and put it on there because it just does like flack files or something. But you have you to know. seek counsel with the uh, the grand elders of title and no, submit just, your... just use the title torrent. Oh, you have yeah, to that's suck right. Beyonce's dick, and then eventually <laughs> you'll get on title. I've heard that yeah. actually. It, no, Jay Z and Beyonce do not like each other. He's a cuck, actually, Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Jay Z, please don't hire people to kill come on me. the show. Yeah, no, <laughs> come on the show. We'll yeah, so that's we'll what review I'm, Plastic Beach. Yeah, that's what I. <laughs> that's what I'm plugging. So uh, we'll yeah. review Lemonade. That's that's my plug for now. Christopher, um, I got fucking nothing going on. Uh, check out the other shows on the Zero Science Network. Uh, we just added a new one. Uh, yeah, just go to zero sciencecom or uh, do a search for Zero Science wherever you download podcasts. Zero Science. Mm-hmm. Very good. Patrick? Yeah, I, I got a few things going on this month. In between uh, vomiting? In between vomiting. Uh, I, I puked at a show yesterday. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, what do I got? Uh, May 24th. So I actually, this is the first time I'm announcing it on this program. Uh, I'm playing keyboards for uh, Austin Stoner Doom outfit Vos now. Uh, pretty exciting. Been uh, talking about it, hooking up with these guys for a while. But yeah, I'm going to be doing some keyboards with these guys. And we're playing a show in Alston at the Rat's Nest. Uh, DM me if you want the address to that. Uh, and that's on May 24th. Uh, and then actually I'm playing with Butterscott uh, at Tavern at the End of the World on May 25th as well. And then I have a show with Smell, which Christopher and Jim will be playing with me as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got the Wrecking Crew, the Rampikes Wrecking yeah, Crew. Yeah, what's this yeah. band? What's this band going on? So this huh? is a different band that he's talking about. <laughs> so this, this is actually no, no, my but project. What is, a, what, yeah, what is this thing with uh, Jim playing drums? I'm curious. So basically what we did was is Christopher has projects and Patrick has projects, and then we've had projects that we've kind of worked on together. And uh, Christopher's friend, John Green of Nickelback, and check him out on the Zero Science Podcast Network. <laughs> um, Wherever you get podcasts. Never heard of them. Um, had a birthday show last night, and uh, we just kind of took all those songs with different projects and put them all together. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah. 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 Are you guys called Smush? He just smushed everything together. <laughs> no, I think Smush is already like a, uh, like a twee pop band. <laughs> yeah, but with two it. U's, Smush. That's what, that's what I was saying, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, what's your Instagram, by the way, so I can DM you about the the address of the rat's nest? Oh, cat, underspo- uh, cat underscore SB. That's oh, cool. C-A-T-T yeah. underscore yeah. SB. That's with two Ts because I'm a uh, seventh grade girl circa 1996. <laughs> XO, XO, cat SB, XO, XO. Yeah, mm, okay. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um, I... oh, so, I'm sorry. So, so oh, what's that's... your AIM screen name, by the way? <laughs> oh, uh, so <laughs> it's the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Smell is the name of this project. And yeah, we're playing it Uncharted on June 22nd. Uh, with Knockover City, Crow Feeder, and Artie Slang. And that's, yeah, that's going to be at Uncharted in Lowell on June 22nd. I might add real quick uh, what I was trying to plug earlier, my album. Uh, it's called Interbeings, one word, um, by Aquaria. So check that out. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Cool. Um, I am doing drums for Patrick on yeah. the Smell record. That's right. And I am also recording some drums for Mr. Todd Bose, former guest on the show for yeah. Down City Armory. Just oh, saw nice. him the other day. It was good seeing him. He looks healthy. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. He's, he's doing well. We love you, Todd. We love you, Todd. Come on the show. We'll review Plastic Beach. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for buying me cigarettes when I was broke. I appreciate that, Todd. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for buying me cigarettes back when I was in junior high. <laughs> <laughs> When he had a, a cute AIM screen name, yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's the early 2000s, you know, it was, uh, I don't know, it was the late 90s, actually. BRB, got to get some cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, that about does it uh, for this evening. Thank you all for listening. Like Christopher said, go check out all the other shows, uh, Jukebox Zeroes, Nickelback, and, and the new one, uh, Discography Deep Dive. Hell yeah. Um, and uh, thank you, Jimmy James, for coming on. We appreciate it. De nada. Go check out all of Jimmy James's shit. Make him rich and famous so he yeah. can fly me around in his private jet. Buy all his right. sandwiches. <laughs> I'm Jim. I'm Patrick. And I'm Chris. And we'll see you in hell. It's hard not to Remember a time when the internet wasn't a cesspool? When Nickelback was not the lazy comedian's punchline? When The Last Jedi or Ghostbusters didn't ruin anyone's childhood? We do. Nickelbackin is a monthly podcast hosted by three longtime friends who really just need an excuse to shoot the shit. But in the meantime, they'll call out some internet hyperbole bullshit while they're at it. Do you secretly enjoy the smooth taste of Dunkin' Donuts coffee? Maybe you're a fan of the work of Jim Carrey. Hell, maybe you even like Nickelback. We don't, but we're in their corner, and by default, we're in your corner too. Listen to Nickelbackin on the Zero Science Network, wherever you download podcasts.